Hello and welcome to the Versa Essentials training. In this module, we will cover current WAN situation, WAN terminology, evolution of the WAN, underlays and overlays, various types of overlays, control plane and data plane, security in the current WAN, and of course current problems at WAN branches. So let's begin. What is WAN? By the definition, WAN is usually uh, a private connection between two or more LAN networks through a service provider network. In other words, if you connect two offices of your own with your own link, even on a very long distance, it still won't be a WAN. For the WAN connection to be called WAN, it should be something provided by the service provider, so by a third party. Historically, WAN networks were used to connect offices between multiple cities uh, to provide connection for services located in different states or cities. Let's talk about WAN terminology. So first of all, equipment that is located on the customer location that helps us connect to the WAN is called customer premises equipment. The cabling that is provided by the service provider to connect to their WAN network is called last mile. And of course, service provider's network is called WAN cloud because the connection uh, to the network consisting of the routers or switches that we don't know about how they look, it's just a cloud for us. Evolution of the WAN. In the 70s and 80s, the most popular WAN service was X25 Connections. It can be considered the first cloud service in its widespread use. It was changed by DS0 lines, which could form the T1, E1 links depending on the number of DS0 uh, lines combined together. Usually, it's a point-to-point -point connection that was provided by the telecom service provider. Frame relay that came to change to T1E1 or like augmentation of T1E1 uh, was a much fast, much cheaper solution and much more flexible solution that became very popular in the 90s. And of course MPLS technology that is still popular up until this day. Um, was designed to replace frame relay and became very popular in no time. It is super flexible, can carry all types of traffic, voice, video, data, so multi-protocol a lot uh, make WAN world way uh, more flexible and scalable. And of course the next branch in the evolution of WAN became SD-WAN. SD-WAN is not actually an evolution from MPLS, it still uses it, but it's just the augmentation, simplification and attempt to make uh, WAN connection, private connection between offices of the customer more flexible and cheaper. Next, let's talk a little about overlays and underlays. Overlay network is the network that we see when we connect to the WAN network. So basically it's just a tunnel that service provider provides us through their network. In fact, you won't see anything but your own devices or maybe the next hub uh, in the service provider network. Usually it's decoupled from the physical network and it's virtualized for us as for the final customer. While underlay network, it's something not visible for the WAN customer. This is something that's visible for the uh, service provider engineers only. So let's see, like for, for example, you want to send some information from your office in New York to your office in Los Angeles. And you will see that packet goes straight forward from one location to another. But we don't see that. In fact, on the underlay, it traverses multiple routers there's, that are invisible for us. Usually, underlay network is built on the fiber uh, network basis. Um, in the current WAN implementations, most often is it is the MPLS label switching. Uh, 
Uh, of course, it's usually shared by multiple customers, but at the same time, uh, most MPLS service providers that provide WAN connectivity between offices can provide you some kind of service level agreement which will guarantee the throughput or delay uh, in connection between your locations. Now, let's talk about various types of overlays. On this slide, you can see the most popular or the most used overlay types used through the history of WAN networks. Nowadays, the most used overlays are MPLS Layer 3 VPN. It's a stateless connection provided using MPLS underlay networks. And uh, the second type of uh, overlay that is most popular nowadays is probably IPsec and GRE and VXLAN tunnels. So it's IP-based tunnels that can run not only through the um, MPLS network, but also through the regular internet connections. All of them have different um, pros and cons, like for example, IPsec, the tunnels are always encrypted and they are stateful, while GRE VXLAN in most cases are going to be a stateless connections as well as uh, MPLS connections. What is the difference between control plane and data plane? On this slide, you can see a typical uh, service provider network. For example, you can see five MPLS VPN uh, routers that belong to the service provider, and we can see multiple customers that are connected to them. So we see customer one, two, three, and so on until customer 100. They all connected to the same network. And control plane is the information that the provider edge routers, or the routers that they are putting on the edge of their network to connect to the customers, is the information about customer network that is being transmitted to the central point where service provider collects information about each of the customers. So for example, information that can be encoded is customer identifier, the route distinguisher, information how to import or export customer routes, what are those routes. Uh, control plane usually connects all the edge routers to a centralized point. Why is it happening like this? In the networks of the size of thousands of different routers, if we'll establish connection between each of the routers, it will be very unscalable solution that will be hard to converge. And the way to connect uh, of the connection to the central point showed to be a much more scalable solution. While the data plane is the actual connection between locations. So for example, when we transferred uh, information through the control plane about the routes of the customer one, and we populated this information through the central location, the data plane can be established directly without going through, um, through the control plane path using the different connections, but at the same time, it's gonna be the fastest connection uh, between the locations. Current security in the current WAN is the pain point for most of the customers. The only security that is being provided by the service providers is that the connection is going to be private. So when you connect to the service provider's network, you won't see anyone else's network and nobody else will see your network. But at the same time, connection is not encrypted. Uh, most of the service providers do not provide any kind of firewalling features, so you'll need to think about them on your own. And of course, if you start working with one of the service providers, you uh, will be locked to it. So it's very hard to make a connection between multiple service provider uh, networks for the WAN connection. So. What are the problems that customers are experiencing in the current WAN networks? First of all, it's the poor user experience. The lack of reporting analysis data that you can see to check uh, the productivity of your WAN links. Also, uh, it's hard to configure routers that are spread uh, across different locations without a central point of management. 
uh, long lead time that service providers usually take to provide connection to any new office. Sometimes it might take up to half a year to provide new connectivity to a new office. Uh, of course, current MPLS connections are very expensive. And the more network develops, the more internet and the way we currently work is developing, the more throughput we need and the more it costs. And one of the biggest challenges is the access to the internet. Currently, to provide access to the internet, customers would need to purchase internet link on each of the locations and purchase additional routing equipment that they would need to configure locally, have local um, administrator to come to configure that connection to provide some kind of security, like a firewalling features, netting features, and um, it leads to a lot of complexity other way of course is to provide this centralized access through the headquarter where we will have internet connection and powerful firewalls but this will require uh, bigger MPLS circuits and of course much more expensive connections uh, between the branch offices and the headquarters